Experience has taught me never to expect much of big studio games that come out in mid-December, too late for any game awards or to go on anyone's Christmas lists. Let's just say that when a dog gets furtively kicked out of a car in the middle of nowhere, it doesn't speak terribly well for the amount of faith the owner had in the dog's ability to not whittle on the carpet. Which is odd, because last I checked, James Cameron's Avatar The Last Smurf Bender is a fucking red-hot piece of pop culture IP. The last Avatar movie did gangbusters in theatres, apparently. I mean, I didn't see it, and I've never met anyone who has, or is enthusiastic about Avatar or even gives it much thought at all, unless they're watching Dances with Wolves on a TV with dodgy colour correction, which makes me suspicious. Maybe there's an unknown subsection of humanity living among us, presumably dwelling underground and subsisting on rats and stray dogs, who emerge from the sewer drains at night to watch Avatar movies and send phone votes into America's next top model. Or maybe James Cameron is buying up millions of empty theatre seats to pad his numbers when he's not buggering off to the bottom of the ocean to scrape bits of dead billionaire off the Titanic. But anyway, in Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, we play one of the central big skinny blue twats who was kidnapped and raised by humans to act as ambassadors, with our main human point of contact being a sneering white guy with his shirt very self-righteously tucked into his big boy pants, who shoots our sister dead and seems really personally offended about our lack of gratitude when we escape his armed death squads and flee into the jungles of Pandora. Yeah, Avatar's nothing if not as subtle as an attention-starved Alsatian in a prison riot. Ooh, humans are huge greedy land-stealing bastards and the Navi are perfect and peace-loving and noble and one with nature. Now look here, James Camerahead, it's very easy to be one with nature when nature is as weirdly fucking obliging as it seems to be on Pandora. It's easy to be nice when you live in the garden at the start of Wonka's Chocolate Factory and there's food everywhere and there's a fucking naturally occurring free internet anyone can connect to with the ethernet cable stuck up their bum and you can literally fling yourself off a fucking cliff and count on the pterodactyl uber service to catch you before you hit the ground. I think the Navi need to check their planet privilege. I jumped on a seagull once and not a whole lot came of it, although admittedly I was motivated more by revenge than a need for transportation. Let's get to the meat and bones of this particular obliterated seagull. Avatar our Fraternity of Pillocks is a Ubisoft sandbox set on Pandora, and I think what might explain the publisher's apparent lack of enthusiasm is that it's the most painfully fucking by the numbers Ubisoft sandbox I've played in some time. More specifically, it's Avatar Far Cry. It's Avatar Cry. Lots of firing arrows out of the undergrowth at oblivious dudes with very short patrol routes. So there's stealthing and there's direct combat, but the array of different gameplay threads can't give each other enough room to breathe, and every core gameplay loop feels like it's missing something. Normal humans are as threatening to your big blue arse as inexpensive toilet paper, so the game is flooded with dudes in in mecha suits, and if your arrow is two pixels off from their insta-kill weak spots, everyone is instantly alerted and knows your position, so stealthing is kind of a bust. And then all the enemy AI knows how to do in combat is charge your position while holding down the fire button, so the combat's a bust as well. If you're not in cover, your health disappears so fast you wonder why you're even bothering to craft better armour, because the difference in life expectancy between gear score 11 and gear score 12 has to be measured in nanoseconds. And now we're getting to it. The three pillars of the Jiminy Cockthroat model stand erect and throbbing. You've got your shitty stealth, your shitty action, and you bet your big blue blitz and bollocks you've got shitty crafting as well. What makes it shitty is that I assumed the whole selling point was being able to go out into Pandora and wet yourself in admiration for the transcendent beauty of the alien scenery. But it's hard to appreciate the warm sensation of your piss-filled loincloth when you then have to turn on your fucking smurfo vision and comb the area isolating what bits of it you're supposed to be harvesting to craft your essential upgrades. I go to the crafting table to upgrade my currently equipped sanitary towel or whatever and it's all like, have you got any bark? No, I have not got any bark. I didn't know I was supposed to be gathering bark. And what bark? There's bark everywhere, it's a fucking forest! Turns out you're supposed to look for where the trees have broken out in tree zits and burst one with a brief unskippable minigame, before being informed you're getting shitty bark because you should have gathered it during the night or while standing on one leg. I'm not gonna plan my fucking schedule around side hustling as a tree beautician game. I'm way behind on my have some actual fucking fun quota. Remember when games didn't need a fucking x-ray specs mechanic to let you know what was important because you could just tell because it'd be in a bright red rotating box and wasn't concealed among 16 non-interactive vegetation assets? Have a Star fapping in pond water has, like many Ubisoft sandboxes lately, the option to turn objective markers off so you have to find things based on vague location clues to keep gameplay more explorative and less about beelining to thing on map, like Disneyland closes in two hours and there's four rides you haven't been on yet. But I had to turn the objective markers back on pretty quick, because even when I was in the right part of uselessly spectacular scenery, I could be ten feet from the objective and walk straight past it because it was hidden by a cluster of Huluvian fireworks shrubs. Yes, tis beauty kills this beast. It's a recurring issue, there's an occasional detective mission where you look for clues in a crime scene and pair them together to draw conclusions, and which ones you have to pair together always felt really arbitrary. Some broken arrows, and a dude who was killed with some arrows, those aren't connected at all, thicko! You're supposed to pair the broken arrows with the tin of unopened sponge pudding you haven't noticed yet, because it's tiny and ten metres away and camouflaged against a golden syrup bush. It was during one of these scavenger hunts that I finally lost patience and kicked Avatar fucked up priorities in the head, because the gameplay was a bore and the story failed to make me give a single cerulean skid mark for these interchangeable blue one with nature other than thou 
dullards and their bullshit problems. Oh no, we're being victimised by the little smelly fragile people who haven't had their every need and want in life fucking handed to them by their environment. Suppose we'd better kill them all and get back to our difficult life of parties and finger painting. Oh what a bore. Why don't you stick a branch up your ass and complain about it on tree reddit?